And now I have the great honor and pleasure of uh, introducing and giving the floor to His Excellency Stanley Kakuo, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Zambia. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. President, the world today is overcome with the overlapping challenges of war, global economic uncertainty, climate change, and food insecurity. The cost of war, be it in the eastern part of the DRC, or the heart of the Sudan, or the war between Russia and Ukraine, has at its best led to the displacement of innocent women and children, and at its worst led to the demise of many of our brothers and sisters. War has left, war has left scars beyond the physical. It wounds the soul of nations, and fragments the bonds that hold humanity together. Needless to say, that humanity must win the war against war. Neither must we lose the race to save our planet. Destroying our planet is destroying our own existence. At this 78th session, we as a global community must bolster our commitment towards the implementation of all ag existing agreements. We need to agree to work towards strengthening global partnerships and good governance, that we, and we must uphold the dignity of all human rights. We must accelerate the attainment of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We must direct our efforts towards addressing inequalities and also realizing a just transition, fostering greater climate action for present and future generations. In this case, a just transition must mean fairness amongst nations while acknowledging that fairness is not equality, but fairness must guarantee access to each of our unique nation's needs. Mr. President, nations burdened with debt must be guaranteed access to cheaper and fairer financing. This ought to be one of the pillars of restoring trust in our systems. It is therefore imperative that international financing institutions and multilateral development banks should scale up concessional financing to least developing countries and this financing should be under improved terms of lending. Regrettably, the exorbitant cost of capital remains an insidious problem afflicting the global south. In fact, Africa bears the heaviest burden of these crippling capital costs. We implore the international community to grasp the agency of this matter and to ensure that every nation, regardless of its economic size, has equitable access to affordable capital. It is also a fact that countries with smaller economies require this capital more, which unfortunately ends up in the first world economies that need it the least. Recognize, Mr. President, that a few development partners honored their ODA pledges, and we applaud them for this effort. We also commend France and other partners for successfully hosting the summit for a new global financing pact in Paris in June this year. Zambia further expresses its appreciation to the official creditor committee under the G20 framework with a special note of gratitude to the co-chairs, China and France, along with the Vice Chair, South Africa. Their diligent work and collaborative spirit 
has played an indispensable role in reaching an important debt restructure agreement for Zambia's heavy debt burden. We continue calling for more reforms of the international financial architecture to quicken the decision-making process that would enable countries in special circumstances to restructure their debt. Mr. President, we wish to welcome the UN Secretary General's proposal for an SDG stimulus package of, least, of at least $500 billion per annum to offset the unfavorable, unfavorable financing conditions faced by countries with special situations. The elements of this package hold greater potential to catalyze the transformative actions in least developed countries for critical sectors such as renew renewable energy, social protection for the weak, health care, quality education, food insecurity, resilient infrastructure, artificial intelligence, and in the rest of information technology. There is need to scale up partnerships and collaboration so that we can have a united effort in strengthening inclusiveness and effectiveness of interna international tax cooperation for the world to combat illicit financial flows. It is also important, Mr. President, that we enhance protection of domestic resources which are required for the application to desired sectors as outlined in the STG, SDG stimulus package. Mr. President, with regards to climate finance, we wish to emphasize the need for an effective implementation mechanism for loss and damage fund as agreed upon at COP27. In the same manner, we reiterate the need to honor the annual $100 billion pledge for climate change with greater emphasis on, an update, on adaptation. This, Mr. President, is very crucial if we are to uphold the credibility of global, global efforts that are aimed at addressing climate injustices and protect our planet from further degradation. Mr. President, to complement access to affordable finance, countries need to enhance trade and investment as the engine of economic development and job creation at both regional and multilateral levels. Under the common market for East and Southern Africa, Zambia is leading the Comesa integration strategy through reducing barriers to trade and encouraging free movement of business persons and goods. Mr. President, in this era of instant communication and, and globalized economies, the well-being of one nation profoundly impacts the well-being of another. Leveraging the transformative capabilities of digital technology, especially artificial intelligence, we aspire to enhance the quality of life of our citizens. Imagine using AI to deliver life-saving medicines that, to that seemingly forgotten grandmother in a village in Africa. Also imagine the grand transformation we can achieve in harnessing the fertile soils of countries like Zambia using the technology of precision irrigation. As, as information communication technologies continue to advance, we have a new frontier for interaction in digital cooperation. Now it is possible for a professor at Harvard to mentor students in Kenya, to mentor students in Kenya, or lecture students at the University of Lusaka. The advancement in digital technology makes it possible to improve the quality of lives of our people by creating new jobs and opportunities for youth, as well as providing access to top-class education and quality health care for all. It is therefore very important, Mr. President, that we, conf we continue to forge new alliances on the development and use of technologies, also the creation and sharing of digital resources and content, as, they were, as well as the development of regulations and policies that govern the use of digital technologies to promote social economic development. We also need to enhance cooperation and ensure that the digital space 
and all technology are used in a responsible manner. We therefore call for the support and investment in digital infrastructure and provision of its access, particularly access of affordable devices and internet services in underserviced communities in least developed countries. Mr. President, the empowerment of women and girls is crucial and is important and very decisive in overcoming poverty in all society. Beyond economic empowerment, women need to equally be put, we need to put emphasis on women and all programs that will promote their well-being. This is why, Mr. President, as the African Union's champions on aiding child marriage, President Hichilema will continue to enhance the collaboration in preventing and wiping out the scourge of early and child marriages so that we can foster an environment conducive for children to have a chance in life. Consistent with this, Mr. President, Zambia is in collaboration with the African Union. In collaboration with the African Union, who this year host a conference for traditional and religious leaders across Africa, aimed at advancing a culture that promotes inclusive development and prevention of early child marriages. Mr. President, Zambia, in line with our reputation as a beacon of peace on the African continent, we will continue to champion the cause of peace, security, and stability as the prerequisites for sustainable development. Because without peace, Mr. President, our joint developmental efforts will be in vain. We shall continue to call for the use of diplomacy as the only option for resolving conflict between nations. Zambia is committed to furthering peace, security, and stability, and that is why President Hichilema visited Kiev and St. Petersburg alongside other select African leaders, and they held honest and constructive discussions with both President Putin and President Zelensky. Zambia will continue to be committed to the UN Charter and its principles of upholding territorial integrity and also the just respect for international borders. Mr. President, as Zambia leads the Tzadik organ on politics and defense and security cooperation, we pledge not only to play our own individual role, but also to galvanize our region and efforts to restore peace in areas requiring intervention on our own continent. Mr. President, we take immense pride in our strong democratic principles as Zambia. Our credentials are solid and we will continue to guarantee our own people, the Zambian people, their rights and freedoms, including their civil liberties. President Hichilema has led government to the historic abolishment of the death penalty and also the end of the offense of criminal defamation of the president. This, Mr. President, is the first time it has been achieved in the history of Zambia. Mr. President, today we address this assembly with a sense of, of accomplishment because prudent Fusco policies have been reinstated in our country. We are nurturing our economy back to health, and the results are quantifiable. Mr. President, in 2021, our economy achieved a commendable growth rate of 4.7% from a contraction of minus 2.8 in 2020. In 2022, Mr. President, the economy demonstrated resilience and maintained a positive growth rate of 3.7%. Furthermore, we have diligently worked to reduce our year-end inflation to single digits, making it at 9.9% for the calendar year 2022. Concurrently, our government is deeply committed to stabilizing our local currency, the Kwacha, against major currencies. And going forward, Mr. President, 
will remain steadfast in reducing the cost of essential household goods for our people. Zambia reiterates the call to reform the Security Council to become, a, to become more inclusive, particularly for Africa to have permanent representation, in line with the, Ezul with the Ezulini Consensus and also the CETA Declaration. These reforms, Mr. President, will not only enhance the legitimacy of the Security Council, but this will put an end to the, this historic injustice against Africa. Mr. President, the time has come to ensure the true composition of our UN family, as well as giving an opportunity for a better diplomatic position and representation for countries that are perceived to be weaker. Mr. President, the threat of nuclear war is a matter that needs our full attention. We take this opportunity to reiterate our resolute stance against the proliferation of the nuclear weapons, and we advocate for a world free of threats. We urge all nations, and we mean all nations, to uphold their obligations under the Non-Proliferation Treaty and to work to prevent the development and production of chemical weapons. Mr. President, we set our eyes on a world we must we set our eyes on an agenda to set the world on a path of sustainability, of success for the next generation. We are hopeful that this summit, this year, all our voices will be heard. We shall rebuild trust in this format. A platform such as this one must ensure that inequality is tackled. Systemic injustice is tackled. We must also ensure that the benefits of progress are shared across the world. Zambia therefore calls on all member states of the UN, the private sector, the youth groups across the world, and other stakeholders to come together in good faith to draw out the contours of the world as it should be for, for future generations as we pass on the baton on all the challenges that we face today for a sustainable and positive future. Mr. President, I thank you. I thank the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Zambia. Your Excellency, thank you.